It all began with the creation of the internet. Pew! Pew! Well, not quite like that, but you know what I mean. The information superhighway, the intergalactic network, the net, the internet, that's where it all began. In 1983, researchers began to assemble the network of networks. And in 1990, thanks to Tim Berners-Lee, we saw the beginnings of the World Wide Web, www. This was not social media, online shopping, or anything else that we're used to now. It was just the basic, the bare bones the most common means of accessing the internet. It was simple websites and hyperlinks. The very first social media site was launched in 1997. SixDegrees.com, where you could make a profile and send messages within networks. It was very basic, but by the time it was bought in 2000 for $125 million, the site had 1 million users, which was a lot back then. <laughs> Several other sites like Are You Hot or Not, where you submitted pictures and others rated your attractiveness in 2000, and Friendster in 2002, which introduced status updates and where you make online friends. From 2003 to 2005, many new and popular and exciting sites like MySpace, LinkedIn, Flickr, WordPress, and two sites by Mark Zuckerberg, The Facebook, and FaceMash. In 2005, Reddit and YouTube were launched, with the very first YouTube video entitled Me at the Zoo. Alright, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. Um, the cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts, and that's that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. A real breathtaker, might I add. In 2006, we got Twitter and Tumblr in 2007. In 2010, Instagram and Pinterest hit the scene. And in 2011, we got Snapchat, which was originally named Pickaboo. I think it was best that they changed that. In 2012, we got the beloved Vine. It slowly took the world by storm with its six second videos. It was eventually shut down in 2016, sadly. It was the basis for many people's childhoods. In 2014, Musical.ly launched. It was a platform similar to Vine in which you had short amounts of time, 15 seconds, to make an impact. Popular songs were used to create videos, and users gained a lot of popularity there. In 2017, Musical.ly was sold to a Chinese company that changed the app to what is now known as TikTok. Users, videos, and followers were transferred over to this new platform, but a lot changed. Videos could now be up to a minute long, and there is a whole library of royalty-free music, and it uses quite a unique algorithm. Ah, algorithms. It's either a puzzle to be solved and profit it greatly off of, or a beast that keeps content creators down a deep, deep, dark hole of irrelevancy. Mmm, 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 irrelevancy tasty. A social media algorithm is most commonly a way of sorting posts in a user's feed based on relevancy and weeds out content that is flagged as irrelevant. Irrelevant. Algorithms can be simple and straightforward or a network of confusing twists and turns that took years to weave and take great minds to untangle. Let's break down some super popular algorithms right now. Instagram. It is utilized in a personal sense, but also widely used by brands, businesses, and influencers. Their algorithm looks at six key factors for each new post. Interest, relationship, timelessness, frequency, following, and usage. Your feed looks at who you have shown an interest in and even topics you were interested in historically. The more you like a certain type of content, the more you engage with it, the more you will see of it. When it comes to posting, consistency is key. The algorithm looks at how often you post and it boosts your content accordingly. A post also needs to receive 
engagement so it gets boosted more. The most important types being likes, reshares, and views for video posts. Instagram stories are a popular part of the app that was introduced a little, a little bit later. They are time focused and expire after 24 hours. They are great for showing progress on a project or share a simple update or message to your followers. YouTube, a beast. A founding father. It has been on the scene for quite a minute and launched many, many side projects and other companies, as well as having ample time to whip up a brutal algorithm. According to YouTube, a quote from YouTube, <laughs> the algorithm is basically a real-time feedback loop that tailors videos to each viewer's different interests. The algorithm's goals, however, are twofold. Find the right video for each viewer and get the viewer to keep watching. The algorithm is also so specific that two people could look up the exact same thing and get different search results tailored to them specifically. Since 2012, YouTube has been using artificial intelligence to weed out content that does not follow their community guidelines. I have received notices for copyright infringement just hours after posting content, sometimes without a single view on the video itself. That AI works hard. They had to introduce this AI to work over time, protecting viewers from a variety of problematic content. This includes spam, sensitive content, and violent or dangerous acts. It is a relatively family-friendly platform, however, you can't throw anything up there. When posting a YouTube video, there are very specific steps that are recommended to follow to better your chances of receiving good engagement. Now, they don't make it easy to find these specific steps, but they're out there. There are browser extensions you can use, like vidIQ, that gives you a more detailed look at your video analytics and teaches you how to do better in the future. They also give you recommendations on what to add when you are posting. YouTube looks for consistency when it comes to video titles themselves. Let's do a little example for you right now. Our video that we are posting is how to make sourdough bread. That's, that's the title we've come up with as of now. While that is what we're very well doing in our video, it is still a little bit too vague for the algorithm, making the title a little bit more specific, but not too specific, like how to make sourdough bread from scratch or how to make sourdough bread at home. We don't want a whole sentence, a whole essay. We just, it needs to be a little bit more curated. This will also help you rank higher on video search results, which is very important. YouTube actually listens. They listen to make sure your title, your hashtags, and video description are all consistent. They will also physically listen to see if you are saying the title almost word for word out of your mouth out loud. They want to hear it. <laughs> They're creeps. Hashtags are controversial, a controversial topic, but in my experience are critical to get right. You really need to think like a human that has absolutely no idea about sourdough bread. <laughs> Your tags can include and should include things like commonly misspelled words, lazy searches like DIY bread or bread, bread sour. <laughs> However you would search something up lazily, add that into your tags. You gotta mix the words around and almost make it dumber. Dumber than you would ever think it would need to be for adult-aged humans. <laughs> People are lazy. TikTok. Mm. TikTok is a platform in which you can view and create videos, as we said, up to one minute in length. The app features a following page, which are people you have followed, and a for you page, which is sort of like a find new things here. Again, curate it to just you. Their algorithm does work similarly to Instagram, in which the more you engage with a topic, the more you will see of that topic. It's the for you page. It's for you. It's all for you. When posting a video, you can search hashtags and the amount of views that that particular hashtag has gotten. Some will have views in the millions and billions. And it's a safe bet to choose those. It won't necessarily get you more views, but you know that it's a popular content that a lot of people are interested in. You know, but also mix it up. Make it relevant to your video. Don't just do the common hashtags. Videos that are watched all the way through will be boosted to even more people's For You pages. So creating engaging videos is key. TikTok has functions like Stitch and Duet, which is a way to add on to other creators' pre-existing videos or your own. So if you have like a 
hot take on something they said or if you want to like bully them. I don't know, you do you. If their duets are on, it's free reign. It can also give you a great chance to be seen by some of that creator's followers. TikTok has a huge library of sounds and if a sound is popular in that specific moment, better be time to jump on it because it is all over the For You page. The algorithm also looks at songs that you get often on your For You page and it'll boost even more videos with that song in it to you. TikTok also looks at your general location just to see where you live about and the language that you speak so you're not getting videos in other languages because <laughs> it is an app that is used worldwide. The thing that sets TikTok aside, what makes it so different from so many other platforms and algorithms is that it does not look at your following. When showing somebody your video, it does not take into account how many followers you have already. It treats each video as its own thing, meaning you can get 150 views on a video and the next day, similar content, maybe even like the same type of video could get millions of views and then you're, you're viral, you're famous. It's just a really interesting way to go about an algorithm. For TikTok, content, hashtags, and your captions come before anything else. All right, now it's time to talk about how I fit into all of this, this whole conundrum this experiment. Since the great ripe old age of nine, I have been obsessed with recording. I got one of those bright blue Canon grandma cameras that is commonly used on a vacation to Florida. I would take that thing everywhere. The grocery store, friends houses, and secretly to school sometimes. I don't know, I was a real filmmaker. Let's see the lady behind there. Okay. And my sister is a freak. Hello, let's just zoom in on up there. Um, I opened up the window and here are all my babies. And Mida? <laughs> Say something for me, Mida. <laughs> about the TV. It's just diary of a wimpy kid. Well, you know what? Do, 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 do. Whoa, so her tail blends in with the... Cool. Goodbye, folks. I would almost never take pictures with that thing because I was just filming, just filming everything, just life. I've always been a sentimental person. Even as a child, I wanted to preserve life as it was right in that moment. I watched a lot of YouTube in secret with my friends because, you know, Waldorf kid. And in most of these little videos I was making, I was talking just like this. Like I was a, like I had an audience of millions. I was famous face to face with a camera. That's life. That's what we do. It wasn't until I was around 12 years old that my random filming took on a sense of direction. I began producing. Oof. Producing short films and skits with puppets and people, friends, props, pets. And it was honestly so fun. <laughs> I'm gonna probably think about it when I'm old and gray. This is just really fun. It's a good way to spend your time. This is also where I picked up some editing experience. Not great experience, but experience nonetheless. I made these videos for years on my dusty, crusty, white 2005 MacBook. It was one of the ones with the DVD player. I used a super early version of iMovie with all those lovely sounds that we know and love. <laughs> You know, they really just, they make that cinematic experience. When I was 14, me and my friends started our first YouTube channel as, as one in my generation does. It was called Dusty People, where we made parodies of shows like Duck Dynasty, Swamp People, and other history channel dad shows, as well as some originals. All right, today we're all gonna go multi-sport bow hunting. Yeah, I, I didn't wanna go to that. Uh, um, I'm kind of sensitive. 
There were bugs everywhere. There are bugs everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. Bugs everywhere. Everywhere real gems. Unfortunately, my questionable content did make it to the internet. We did figure out how to upload videos there. Even though we did eventually delete it, it taught me some some things about YouTube, what to avoid, you know, copyright wise and stuff. When I was 15-ish, <laughs> I started the YouTube channel that I use now. I learned the ins and outs of editing and shooting, this time with a better camera, and I was having an amazing time. I did a whole bunch of types of videos, all of them creative, but I started with a video type of my own design. <laughs> I would record a cover of a song, then create an art piece that was inspired by said song. This lasted about a month, but that is a draining type of content to make, and the copyright strikes left and right, really not ideal. Oof. There are a lot of different types of copyright strikes, but the type that I was getting was um, music plagiarism, infringement. What I mean is I was doing the Beatles, um, and you don't do the Beatles. Uh, pretty much instantaneous copyright strikes. After that, I switched gears. I did sketchbook pages, pen pal letters, art process videos, painting my photography, a little singing, a little studio renovation, murals. I did a lot, and I uploaded every Sunday for about two years, and I had around 70 full-length videos by the time I took my break, the break that I'm still on. <laughs> I never wanted a break because I love it so much, but things happen. YouTube is a lot of effort, and anybody who does it has a lot of dedication. <laughs> I knew I needed to switch platforms. And where did I go to? TikTok, of course. TikTok was the place to go. I had seen people grow quickly, and I thought that after all these years of creating, that might be nice. <laughs> Oh, it excited me greatly. Let's take a look at some of the biggest TikTok stars to date and their growth and the different types of content you can find there. Charlie D'Amelio, she has the most followers on TikTok, over 100 million to be exact. She became famous for her choreographed dance videos after launching her account in 2019. And in a matter of months, she was topping the charts, already rocketing, rocketing into the stratosphere. <laughs> I have never personally had her on my For You page, but I'm on a, a different side of TikTok, if you know what I mean. While Charlie is an example of a slower but explosive rise, there is one other really common way that people get viral. Bella Porch in a zoomed in lip syncing video of the popular song M to the B in 2020. This became the most liked video and I think it still holds that title and it left her with 40 million followers. At 420 Dogface made a video of himself rollerboarding, skateboarding to the song Dreams while holding a full container of cranberry juice. It's just doing live in life. The video was entitled Morning Vibes and it is currently sitting at over 12 million likes and it left him with 6 million followers. It really puts in perspective that anything at any point can be popular for little to no reason. <laughs> On TikTok you tend to see a viral video or two every day. Some of them are really strange. Yeah, it's it's just really hard to say what you could be viral for. All right, here's where I come in. I'm gonna get bullied. Well, I wanted to try my hand at this TikTok thing. I wanted to experience the algorithm for myself rather than just reading and see if I can get any following at all. It's fun, it's kind of funny, and I'm, and experimentation, you know? It was December 26, 2020, <laughs> the day after Christmas. I uploaded my first video. I had planned to upload TikToks much before this, but I was scared. I sang a cover of Hopelessly Devoted. But now there's no way to hide since you pushed my love aside. I know out of my head, hopelessly devoted to Because that was a song that was pretty popular at the time and it was fun to play uh, and sing. I did quickly notice that covering songs when they were popular was 
pretty impactful. It is a good method to follow. Some songs gain popularity with the trend they are associated with and stay on the For You page for a few weeks, others for a few days. So it is good to jump on songs from trends when you can. I actually got quite a bit of my following from this mushroom growing kit that I got for Christmas. <laughs> it was a 14 part series in which me and my followers watched mushrooms grow. It was like watching paint dry, but it was pretty entertaining. I use this popular feature called text to speech where it's almost like Siri reading out sentences. It just makes it a lot more interesting. Day eight. They can double in size every day. Look at these low bois. They're just doing their best. Getting big and mushroom like. Panel four is still a disappointment though. IDK maybe she's a late bloomer. It's water time. Take the big sip love. Yeah we love a good shower. So 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 refreshing. Oh yeah get it I guess. Rain rain don't go away and come again every day. It really just distorts everything and it's quite enjoyable. For those first two weeks I was growing the mushroom kit, I didn't even realize that that's what was boosting my other content. I uploaded one mushroom video and then a few hours later, I would upload a cover. By the end of the day, I would pull in around 1,000, 1,500 views per video and several hundred likes. Still following that successful blueprint. When the mushroom growing series ended, I did have a few more successful videos with the normal amount of likes and shares and comments. Then it dropped off. I tried to compensate for this drop off by following some popular trends like cute baby names and your real eye color. And while those were popular, my account hit its first plateau. The plateau I'm still recovering from. I didn't lose following, but I didn't gain any, and I got very little engagement. I began another series in hopes of resurrecting the numbers I was getting before. Making the rainbow room. <laughs> I basically added a sun catcher to my window of my art studio every day, and at the end I was going to reveal the results from a photo shoot. This was a 10 part series in which I pulled in a whopping 40 views. 40 views per TikTok. Now I knew what people meant by TikTok's algorithm being kind of brutal and a little unfair. And I never experienced it because I found success right off the bat. <laughs> That's just what I thought the average view count was and the average amount of likes were for a new creator, when that is not the case for everybody. I have had a few popular videos since. Adding moss mushrooms and crystals to my car. He already a vibe and GL. A little messy, but she cute. I made clay mushrooms, and I found the moss. Crystals. Here's the new look. Moss car was a bit of a success, with almost a thousand likes and very very many sweet comments. My most recent video that had a whisper of the glory days was a cover of Burning Pile by Mother Mother. All my style, all my grace, all I tried to save my face, all my guts tried to spill, all my holes tried to fill, all my money spent a long time spent, all my drugs and all my rent, all my The only reason it has the most views to date for my account, um, 4,000, is because it was shown in Russia to a lot of people all at once. They were sweet. 
all the comments looked like this. I Google translated some of them and it was great. They were all like, haha, this American girl is gonna be so confused as to why there are so many Russians. And I was confused. They, they were right. I still am confused, but because of this, I now call 1.40 p.m. the Russia moment. And I, and I, <laughs> because that's what it was. And I do upload then from time to time just to see. It hasn't happened since, but a good memory. In the most recent days of my TikTok journey, one could say that my account is dying, not for a lack of good content, but from a lack of love on the algorithm side. There is this phenomenon called being shadow banned in which your content is shown to no one sometimes, zero views for hours, or maybe very few of your most active followers. Sometimes after a few hours, they'll sort of get out of their shadow banny rut, but most of the time you have to re-upload before they can even see it. I think that's my problem. For this past week, my videos have been pulling in maybe around 20 views, less than 20 views. And my only reasoning for this is that I am probably shadow banned. I do not know why. I have heard for some creators that one day it just stops. It just ends and everything is normal again. And I'm honestly excited because I'm proud of what I create. Yeah. What's the big takeaway? What have I learned so far? What do, what does it mean? Social media is unnecessary. I've, I've, I've known that, but it's here. <laughs> For most of us, it's woven into our lives. It's where we get our information, where I get some of my information. There are negatives surrounding it and what it can cause, but in the end, it makes for a more colorful, more informed community. TikTok for me, an almost adult age person who looked like this six years ago, you know, Waldorf kid, no phone, no phone till you can drive. TikTok for me really opened my eyes to so many other people's lives and issues, cultures, ableism, fears, racism, sexuality, gender, poverty, so many different things across the board, really. I know it sounds very Gen Z of me, but without it, I would still be misinformed. That's not the only reason to watch it. It's not the news. It's also just super entertaining, but it's almost like a kid's show in the sense that amongst the comedy, there are lessons. I don't know how long I plan to influence. Influence. I don't know if I will even do YouTube again, but it is good to remember that everybody has something to offer. It all depends if you want to spread it. Share it and just maybe, just maybe, you'll make it on the For You page. They see me night and daytime such a gay time they don't